So there's a couple ideas going around about what the best type of deck is in Stormbound. And today, I'm going to be trying to prove that the Rush deck is the superior archetype of deck. What's poppin' birds? The popper equals back in this, and welcome back to another Stormbound video. Today's Stormbound video, we're going to be testing out this deck that was suggested to me by More Fun. I made a few adjustments, but that's the main decision. And this deck has been supported by the number one Rush player in the Stormbound community, uh, Reckless Rush. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, he is famous for using Rush decks and getting to absurdly high ranks with them. Uh, I think I think the legend goes that he got to Diamond with 13 base health, which is kind of nasty, actually. So, what I actually did was yesterday, I asked him, can you teach me a little bit more about how to play the Rush deck? And... So he sent me this massive wall of text, which I appreciate. It was very expansive on how to play Rush decks in general. So as I go through this game, uh, I'm going to try to explain to you guys some of the tips that he told me. All right. Um, hmm. So he told me one of the things, we'll just start out here. One of the things he told me that's most important about Rush decks is obviously having units that move to spaces basically yeah that was the first thing he brought up to me actually so cards like crimson sentry azure hatchers those are super helpful in rush decks oh and salty uh, obviously to just expand your front line because the way that you're supposed to play a rush deck rush deck is basically you not really ignore but you pay a, a only Okay, well, you pay, you don't pay too much attention to the enemy's units. Basically, you push your front line up as far as possible and try to overwhelm them just by having troops on the board. So, if you'll notice, that's why we have troops such as dubious hags and green prototypes. Although those units may not be, you know, the best because obviously they can convert to help your enemy out, they're used because they're low cost and can be utilized to push up on the board and that's super helpful so this deck in particular reckless told me is a little bit interesting because it's shadowfen he normally uses uh swarm rush but basically uh he told me some extra tips uh that kind of can apply to all rush decks so he told me that you should as a rush deck player always try to control the center of the board so these these squares right here these 10 squares and the reasoning for that is your main killing options as a rusher is to get to get units tucked into these corners and then have something here in the middle to kind of guard them as a bodyguard as he called it so what we're going to be trying to do is control the middle then put something into the corner tuck it away and then use our potion of growth to buff it up he specified that he normally tries to put Devastators in that corner, and that usually works pretty well. Obviously, we are not Swarm, so we do not have Devastators, but the same principle can apply. We'll try to put a very strong unit into that corner. Now, what makes this Rush deck a little unique in comparison to a lot of other ones is the uh, in inclusion of Cordia. So, obviously, Cordia is not exactly r super rushy material, but the reason why she works in this deck is that spreading of the eggs, which can actually be used to advance your front line, which is pretty genius if you ask me. Thank you, more by the way. He's the one who made the, the large part of this deck. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the gist that... Uh, that's, that's our goal for the Rush deck as we go through the game a little bit more. Obviously, we'll talk about more of the things he told me as they come up. Another thing he told us is, as we're going through here, we should use Toad and Toxic Sacrifice and Crimson Sentry to kind of clear out the board so we can get our units where we want them. He said that was also pretty important. And that totally makes sense. Oh, look, we got a good opportunity here. So Azure's all the way up there. We're going to replace Toad. Now, Azure Hatchers are obviously... Absolutely wonderful at keeping your front line because you know they just explode into a bunch of toads. Mine is level four, so they're actually spreading five toads out, and that will cover this entire five square area. So, uh, he said, Reckless Rush told me 
that Azur Hatcher is going to be instrumental in making sure that our front line stays thick and active. So, although we're not exactly using that pocket strategy that I talked about earlier, it's still working pretty well. Oh, did I wave a handshake for you? I don't think I did. Um, you know, we still have the front line and we're able to set it up. What should we do here? Well, as a rush deck do, let's just ignore him. Put dubious hags there, buff these guys up, and then we'll put down Call Militia, and I think it will all be okay. So, Reckless Rush did tell me Calm Militia is not exactly optimal for Rush decks because, you know, it's a random spawn and you don't have complete control over your positioning. But, it is good for mana efficiency, so that's why I've kept it included in this deck. Oh jeez, we, we have a big beefy guy to take care of here. This Toad is going to be annoying. I think we're going to probably have to spawn Cordia. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That was a really good play, not going to lie. That was perfect. I haven't I haven't seen Twilight Prowlers in forever. They're quite strong. Alright, he's got his own Calm Militia. Hmm. Actually, what we could do is we could just attack him. If we just put Cordia up here. Cordia has let's see. Let's see. I spawned three eggs, there are four spots. And two of them are what I want. So we have a fifty percent chance to get two eggs up there. I say we go for it. That will help us maintain our front line really well. Nice! That's exactly what we were looking for. And mm, I'll replace Gifted because Crimson... Oh, okay. Let's do this. All right. So, the reason, I, the reason I did that. Cordia is serving as kind of a blocker. Um, Units are going to have to go through her first. Obviously, she's got one in strength right now. So not super threatening to anything, but it can distract a movement unit if he's only got one or two in his hand. And then the other one will attack the dragon's nest because, oh my gosh, that's really, that's a pretty good play. Oh, I only did three damage. That's unfortunate. Luckily, though, dragon's nests are not affected by that ability. And I don't think, hmm, that's quite a beefy witch. Eight. Oh, it's fine. We got the W. Nothing you can do about this. I guess, inadvertently, I kind of forgot that structures are immune to a lot of status effects and things like that. Like, you can't... You can't poison them. You can't freeze them. You can't drain strength from them. You can't do any of that. And, uh... I th that's basically why we just won. So, GG to that guy. But as you can see, the rush playstyle is pretty darn good at killing. Now, for this deck, uh, our mana curve and how the cards follow it, we're looking at, uh, Reckless Rush had noted that it was like a seven to 10 turn kill. Obviously, you can kill early, earlier than that, and that's cool, but uh, you probably shouldn't try to go later because then your cards, your cards will stop using the mana that's available to you, and then you'll be losing efficiency, and that will obviously lead to an L. So, the obviously, the rush name goes pretty well with the idea that we want to get this work done quickly. And, you know, it works pretty well. Also, for somebody who doesn't have a lot of time, this deck is pretty darn good for them. And the playstyle in general. Alright, we're up against OKO. I'm going to pretend that's what that said. We're going to push up with Dubious and put down Calm Militia. Classic. Uh, and then we'll end our turn. We got two good units here, Azur and Toad. And then we also have our Helio Troopers. This is a pretty good hand. I like it. Oh yeah, one other thing to mention. Cat reveal at 2,500 subs. But besides that, uh, he talked about how card counting is pretty important. So you need to know exactly where your cycle is in order to pro properly figure out where your lethals are going to end up. And lethals are just killing abilities or killing cards for those who are not aware those would be for me like salty outcasts and maybe cordia depending on what you want to count uh anyways so he said that was pretty important like be aware of the cards that are cycling in and out of your deck and uh that makes a lot of sense to me that was especially important with winter freeze decks they're not as common now because the freeze spells got all jumbled up but you know the principle is the same oh frozen core 
Hmm. Okay, so we inadvertently blocked ourselves. But it's not so bad. So another thing, this is coming from me. Something that's important to note is the attack order in Stormbound. So look, if he spawns, we'll just, uh, I don't, we'll put this here. So if he spawns a unit there, it is going to attack upwards first. Then if he spawns another one, it's going to attack towards the center and then to the corner. And that's why stuffing all your troops into the corner is so important because on the rare chance he has enough mana and cards that will attack in movement directions, um, he has three, is pretty unlikely. And that's why it's important to make sure to guard your guys in the corner. Obviously, as he's winter, the mana aspect is not too pressing for him because he's got a frozen core down. But, you know, that's the idea behind it. Oh, that's so unfortunate. And Icicle Burst. Okay. Alright, we're killing that Frozen Core right away. Oh, this kind of stinks because I don't have... We're going to replace that. That's not going to be useful. Ooh. You know what? It's okay. I just can't let him have that. I cannot let him have that. Frozen Core is so busted for winter. It's insane. Oh, nice! Call Militia went exactly where we want. I guess one of the greatest enemies to this kind of deck is the Winter Stall. It's it's kind of a flip flop. Whoever gets up, whoever gets their, whoever gets their stuff going for. Oh my, God. rock workers! We're gonna replace salty. Um, so our deck's not made for this. So obviously we're not going to have a fun time. Let's see, what what can we do? What can we do? That cursed icicle burst. Spawn Cordia. Hopefully, I guess we'll start building up from the back. So this guy The freeze the freeze is strong. Alright. Um I guess building up from the back is our best option here. Even though it doesn't really go with the playstyle, it's what we gotta do. Otherwise, we would just lose for certain, and we don't want that. So, we're approaching... Oh, wow! Gift to the Wise. Well, we are approaching a point... ...where he's just able to clap us because he has more mana, being from Winter. And that's not cash money. Alright, well... This is obviously... Not going so cash money. But, you know, we still got a chance. Still got a chance to come bring it back. We're gonna try. There's no point in giving up. Alright, so we're clearly injured. This is not good. If he's got Moments Peace again, obviously I'm not gonna be a fan of that because then he can just Icicle Burst. We'll see what he does. We do have Toad, so we can put Toad in the back and then kind of use that tech to bump up here and get some more strength uh, to counter the Mistwives. That's a good strategy. Um, Yeah, that's what that's that's basically what I got right now. <laughs> toad and then wait, can we spawn all these guys? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, we could. That's pretty neat. Moments peace. Okay, did we actually manage to get I think we managed to sneak out that 7 damage. Okay, alright, this is a good starting point. This is good, this is good. We're gonna spawn Toad. He is going to do bits. Oh, that was, that was, I don't, I, mm, I guess I was expecting him to go there. Alas. Okay, so we're gonna shove something into the corner there, just because that's the way it goes. And then we'll put a bodyguard here. And hopefully, hopefully this will work out. Luckily, those dubious hags actually did not get to use their ability. That was all part of the plan, naturally. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it wasn't. Okay, that's not good. So we lost our bodyguard and the dubious hags are now susceptible to being murked. Oh, he didn't do that. Okay, okay. All right, how, mu how much do they have? Six? We have a kill here if we can manage to get Salty into the base. 
but that doesn't seem to be what's going to happen. So I think we're going to keep Salty and then basically play defense. How many toes will we spawn? We'll spawn a good amount. All right, let's just spread everything out and try to make sure that we keep our we keep our line up. Okay, that was that was pretty good. So we have Salty, so we can kill him. And we've also got Toxic Sacrifice, so if we need to clear out, we can do that too. Okay, uh, we definitely, we got a good opportunity here. Hopefully, we can turn this around. Okay, Gift of the Wise, this is really dangerous. I bet he's got Rhymelings, he's probably got Rhymelings, he's probably got Frozen Core, and maybe Mist Wives. That's what I'm guessing he's got. Oh, he has a Lady Rhyme. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! What a fantastic misplay. <laughs> good game, Winter Stall. Rush beats all. That was so good. That was an impromptu rhyme. Clapped him. Clapped him, clapped him. I was just punching the air there for a little bit. It's all good. You don't need to worry about it. Whew. That was, uh, that was pretty tough, but I think that's all I got for you guys today. Let's collect our quest items. I'll show you guys the deck once again. So there we go. That's the rush deck that I have made out of a great suggestion and some tips from a king. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something. That's all I got today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. It'd be cool if you leave a comment. And it'd be super if you'd subscribe. See you guys next time.